I introduce Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. Hello. Have you made any sort of record over the years of how many hit records you have notched up? Yes. I think uh, there are about um, 3,300 gold records. How many is that? Yes. It really is a lot. I doubt that. Maybe 3,200? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a lot in any case. It was an interesting coincidence, actually, Mike, that, that earlier on in the week there was uh, the Jailhouse Rock movie, Elvis Presley's movie on the television. Coincided. Mike starred in that. Yeah, <laughs> right, on keyboards. Yeah. Yeah. It was a silent role, but it, a yeah. featured one. Yeah. But, I mean, in the movie, Elvis Presley sets up a record label, okay, and is amazingly successful with it in a very short period of time. That's now, the way movies are. Right. But, I mean, earlier, around that time, though, you set up the Spark label. I mean, how easy or difficult was it in those days to set up an independent label? That's about what it was, a Spark. A Spark. Yes, we had a, a, great, a great amount of difficulty. Uh, we knew how to make records, but we didn't know how to manufacture, promote, or sell them. Mm. And so we hooked up with those great, that great family at Atlantic at the time. Jerry Wexler, Ahmed Erdogan. Mm. Spark Harry. was really like a stepping stone for mm. us into working uh, totally just creatively and out of the business. Mm. Because on Spark you were working with the Robins, weren't you, very closely, who became, yes, right. almost became, anyway, the Coasters. I mean, I know... Yes, that, part of the personnel. Yeah, left. But, uh, and you took them with you to Atlantic. Now, also at that time, really, I, I get the feeling that you were spending much more time getting the production right on records than almost anybody else around that time. I mean, did you, did you really carefully build up Coasters singles? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. We rehearsed the Coasters for weeks and weeks. Yeah. Who were you using on sessions around that time? What do you mean? Session musicians. Uh, in California, we had Ralph Waldo Hamilton on upright bass, Jesse Drums. Sales. <laughs> Feed me another instrument. <laughs> uh, we didn't use any. I played the piano. Uh, we had uh, Adolph Jacobs joined the coasters traveling on the road, and he played guitar. Mm. And a saxophone player named Gil Bernal, mm. Mm. who, when we moved, to New York in 57. Of course, all the musicians changed and uh, we worked with King Curtis. That's right, yeah. How did your association begin with Presley? Well, um, as I understand from the books that have been written about it, uh, that uh, uh, there was a record, we wrote Hound Dog for Willa Mae Big Mama Thornton. Right. And um, it seems that a, a group that was playing in Las Vegas at the time um, heard it and they were doing a version of it and Presley heard them doing it and decided to do a version of his own mm. and uh, that kicked off a long association with Elvis Presley mm. and the drifters I, I picked the drifters out particularly because I think uh, there goes my baby and subsequently Benny King stand by me is still two of my favorite singles I mean, had they been recording a long time since before you actually became associated that with was them? They, they were actually later. a different group, yeah, and that that yeah. happened later they They were hired as the drifters. The drifters were as a name ultimately belonged to uh, I think an accountant, a lawyer, and a manager and um, there was a group called the Five Crowns, I think it was the Five Crowns, and that was the group with Benny King mm. and uh, after a uh, a period when there was no drifters the uh, they were hired as the drifters. They replaced the original drifters group. Mm -hmm. The personnel was constantly changing yeah. with the drifters. Mm -hmm. And when we got involved with them, it was a new group. Actually, there was one record made. Uh, Nesui Erdogan produced it in California uh, with the old group, Ruby Baby. Uh, but after that, we worked with the new group, the new personnel. And Benny King was the lead singer. But then after that, Benny left and became solo artist on his own. Mm -hmm. And we did subsequently did these uh, the other records with Benny. We did uh, Spanish Harlem, yeah. Stand uh, by Me, Stand by Me. It was yeah. the same session actually. Because Benny King's back on Atlantic. Now, I know. Isn't he? Yeah. I just I just found that out. Yeah, yeah that's Is nice. there any chance you may work together it's again? Very possible. Mm. Very possible. If yeah. Jerry Wexler buys his dinner, we'll possibly work with <laughs> Benny King and Jerry Wexler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump a few years to Steeler's Wheel. Yeah. Because uh, again, your involvement with Steeler's Wheel as producers right. resulted in two albums. I mean, were they smooth albums to work on? Did you enjoy them? Um, I, we enjoyed working with them. I think it was in a way difficult. Um, 
took a long time. And uh, I it think took it me about a okay. week to, to, to get uh, <laughs> to, understand to, them. to the Glaswegian <laughs> yeah. accent. And uh, after that, it was easier. It was, a diff it was difficult working. I mean, uh, uh, we're from different parts of the world. But um, most of our history is working with black artists in the United States, mm -hmm. as, you, as you probably know. And, let's uh, let's read finally on, because I know we're running out of time, to Dino oh. and Sembello and how you came across them. Because they've been in existence as a duo for quite a time, too, haven't they, as writers? Mm, not really as a duo. They've been writing for a long time. Mm. And they worked with various bands uh, together, with bands and singly in clubs and so on. We like them very much as writers and singers, and we decided that uh, 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 it might be an exciting collaboration uh, across the boards. We decided to write, arrange, and produce everything together. And uh, they, were, uh, they were turned on by the situation. And we did it. Mm. And we're very happy with the album. When did you record the album? Uh, well, it was finished about four weeks ago. Actually, the masters were cut about four weeks ago. It took uh, from the inception, the, the writing job, till the end of mastering was about five and a half, six months. Mm. And I understand it was just released today on A&M. Right. Okay. By the way, yes. Right. And there's a chance, too, actually, over the next couple of weeks, we'll be having some music from that on the program. Oh, that would be I hope so. Terrific. <laughs> anyway, Mike and Jerry, thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're